friends, welcome back to Paint Break, the podcast where you can find a little bit of encouragement, discover new ways to make your hobby more fun, and most importantly, learn to paint bravely. Now this week we got some pretty fun hobby topics, we got some just general hobby stuff that we've been doing, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a fun little, little podcast, so you know, get your painting stuff out, get ready to go, and let's talk some hobby. First, before anything else, I'm going to ask my co-host over here, Brent, what have you been up to in the last couple weeks? Well, I wanted to report back that the magnet sandwiches are holding so far. I talked about this. We got this tin steel, this duct steel, uh, snipped it out, used the hot glue gun to glue it to the bottom of some bases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, take that steel, it's ferromagnetic. You put a, a magnet as the meat in some sort of a magnet sandwich. You can stick mm-hmm. that that mini to to anything you want, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that the hot glue is holding. I've done this on Still like, holding. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've done this on well <laughs> over a hundred minis so far. One hundred percent success rate over. Uh, it's been more than a month now, so yeah, it's been a while. Look, it's it's gonna fail. It is a stupid system, but I want to let you know. That it is solidly okay, and we'll be updating you every couple of weeks here on Paint Bravely, the podcast. We want to make sure to keep you up to date on the hot glue situation, because, you know, hot glue can be uh, quite precarious, you know, in my personal experience. Um, Now, a a lot of people, since the magnet sandwich incident took place, have asked why you didn't just use washers. Now, you actually have a good reason for this. I do. I do. Okay. If I'm going to put a magnet on the bottom of the base of a mini, I want it to be centered, you know? And a washer, much like a donut, is missing the center. And Mm -hmm. you can't... Then you just end up with magnets on the side of the base. It's weird. Now, if there was such a thing as, like, a washer that had a filled-in center, or if I could just buy a little piece of steel in the hardware aisle. That would be better, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, Not the case. But yeah, the the most conveniently sized thing, the like small circular piece of steel that I can get in any diameter that I want, yeah, that's a washer. And in a lot of ways that makes sense. But that middle part's missing. And so you always end up with an off-centered mini sticking off of your magnetic painting handle just just way off kilter and it bugs mm-hmm. me it bugs me that makes perfect sense i'm completely on board with that a, a glue, reasonable though. question a reasonable suggestion and, and <laughs> yeah. that's the answer yep a reasonable man <laughs> a reasonable man yeah uh, what do you what are you drinking there is that is that for real like the mountain dew like major balance Zero. Is it really? Yeah. <clears throat> See, I knew I knew you'd be into that. Ooh. Yeah. Back when back when Brent visited me last year, I was I was teaching him about the major melon. I already knew about the major melon. You were Did teaching you? me you were teaching me that you had a gas station quarter mile yeah. from your house is what you were teaching <laughs> Which me. Is yeah. Dangerous as all hell. Yeah. yeah. That's not good. It's not good for me. Uh yeah. Yeah, I'd only had it canned before. You were showing me how it tasted coming out of a big gulp, is is what I was learning. Straight out of the tap. Yeah. Right. Yes. (laughs) From the source. (laughs) From the source itself. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, the hot glue situation. Like, uh, you never know what that stuff. Um, I've been, like, recently I've been working with some hot glue. Not laying it down myself, but trying to clean up a model. Uh, I got this Skaven Doom Wheel in the mail like a while back from this dude Chris out of Canada. And like he sent me a boatload of models. And they're all just completely assembled and covered in hot glue. So I've been having to remove the hot glue, which really made me think about the magnet sandwich thing. Because it's like, you know, we were thinking, oh, you know, there's a failure rate. There's going to be some issues. But for real, like removing hot glue from plastic is the worst it's the worst it it took me hours to clean this model from hot glue 
So I think you're fine. Like, I think you're probably fine. <laughs> so far, so good. And the key is to use yeah. a lot of hot glue. That way it's not going anywhere. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The more hot glue, the more adhesion you get. Yeah. Oh, man. Always pick the right tool for the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> or overdo it with the wrong tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hot glue. What? 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 what I was just going to say, what else is new, Casey? Um, man, that's been, there's been a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of stuff the last couple of weeks. I've been, I've been spending a lot of money, you know? Uh, I bought a lot of stuff. Like, I know we talked about uh, last time or the time before that was, uh, you know, why do we need so many paints? Why do we buy so many paints? And my position was kind of like, we, we really don't need that many paints. And of course, because you do, uh, I went out and bought like a boatload of paints. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I uh, actually, I, I went out and bought some more uh, Army Painter air paints because they work pretty good. So I was like, okay, oh, I need some of these uh, these purples. So I bought a couple of purple sets, like six paints. Um, refilled on some scale 75 greens that I actually like ran out of, which is almost unheard of in mini painting. Like running out of a paint, like who does that? Uh, I got literally everything pro acryls ever made in the mm -hmm, mail mm -hmm. uh, including their new washes that i haven't tried out and i got the entire basic set of scale 75's uh artist series that i forgot that i bought that's actually a pretty big list there casey yeah just just paints just uh -huh. those i bought lots of other <laughs> things too <laughs> Um, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty excited about, uh, the pro krill and the scale 75 paints. Um, the pro krill especially are one of those paints that like, I just want the whole range of because I've just been grabbing those more often. Like they just work. So I like them and I bought them all. Uh, the scale 75 artist paints, uh, I think I may have mentioned at one point or another. Probably on multiple podcasts, but it's worth mentioning again. The artist paints from Scale 75 just have such a good smoothness to them just mm. out of the bottle. <clears throat> like, they're some of the nicest paints I've ever worked with. And I don't, I don't know how they're made or what, what the deal is, but they just are super nice. They're like velvety, you know, coming out. They're just soft. So mixing them and putting them on and stuff and thinning them down just feels right. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think I bought into that Kickstarter like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And I forgot that they were even coming and they just kind of showed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, well, as be you careful, do. Casey. You don't want all our viewers going out and buying scale 75, do you? Maybe. Maybe, eh? maybe get a few <laughs> bottles, see how it feels. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's funny actually. The I don't usually call out paints when I when I make videos. I used to. I used to just show every single paint that I used. Right. I remember. And I stopped doing that mm -hmm. because, in all honesty, it just doesn't matter. Like, you need a brown. Well, what's the closest brown to you? That's that's the one you're going to use. That's the one that's right. Right. So I stopped doing that, and I'm just like, here, this is this is the color you need. Whatever brown you have in front of you. But I, I did actually call out a scale 75 color, um, toxic waste, I think it's called toxic green or some such, um, because it just works like it's weirdly like better than other paints. And I, I can't explain why I don't know the reasoning mm. behind it, but it just works better. So I actually did that. But, you know, it's not a terrible thing. Scale 75, nice paints. Yeah. Look into this. I mean, not not with any real speed, but eventually I'm going to look right, into right. this. Yeah. Just wh whenever you have time, and uh, you know, you can get into a new paint line. You know, explore it a little bit, see what happens. 
If I see it in a oh. store or a convention booth, I will buy <laughs> some scale 75 paint. I will do it. I will do it. They do have they do have like mini sets of paint. So like I bought the skin tone paint that has like everything you need to paint whatever type of skin tone you want. Like that was my kind of introduction to their artist line. And that was that was more than worth it for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> so you know what I've been trying out recently? I tried out um, a few of my five-year-old bottles of spray paint that's down oh, in the yeah. garage. Yeah. The ones have been freezing over the last five winters. And they've actually they're actually in the in the basement, so I think they've been above the freezing point that entire just, time. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I've I've used them from time to time. I rarely do any, you know, maintenance or anything on them, and so I, I assume the the nozzles are not in pristine shape. But so so what I've been trying is just a a random selection of my my old crusty white spray paints, and I tell oh, you, okay. that's a that's a roll of the dice right there. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the key well, is to shake them up real good <laughs> and and make sure they're at least warm when you take them outside and try to shoot them at some models yeah that's that's a tough call i i've yeah. had i've definitely had some spray paint cans sitting around for years at a time like and i'm thinking should i just spray it's a this risk. model down <laughs> it's a risk <laughs> no i <clears throat> I was getting footage for kind of like a, a cheap zenithal highlight sort of thing. And I'm actually mm -hmm. kind of making the point that you never know what you're going to get out of a bottle of spray paint. <laughs> right. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. So did you ruin some minis? Just strip them down? Not that bad. It's actually surprisingly not that bad. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I found three old bottles of white and one... I got one puff out and then it just jammed permanently. Oh no. <laughs> and then and then two other gave surprisingly decent zenithal highlights. But it, it, this just got me thinking that for for all that we talk about paints and try to understand them, mm -hmm. I still do not understand spray paints. It is still like like I know the best practices to try to get a good coat, you know. Yeah eight inches away start the spray then move past your target right, and end it, yeah. come back yeah 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 it was smooth like confident we, we were movement all taught right. that way right <clears throat> and, and there's all these things we're taught but you know do it in low humidity make sure that the can is warm make sure that you shake it really well you're supposed to you know turn it upside down and shoot to clear out the nozzle when you're done like there's there's all these oh, best yeah. practices but at the end of the day, who knows what you're going to get and <laughs> uh, do a test mini first. <laughs> that I mean, that's probably fair. Just like do the test mini first and see what happens. Because, yeah, you never know what's coming out of the end of that spray bottle. You never I mean, know. I didn't, I didn't know that you were supposed to turn it upside down and like shoot it upside down to clear that out. I've never really done that. All right, now Brent walked away from his desk once again. I guess he's coming back, so we can't really talk about that. But anyways, yeah, so spraying it upside down. I never knew, I never knew you were supposed to do that. I've never done that before. Never had an issue with that before either. Like it clogging up if you don't clear it after the fact. Well, I don't know if that's why, but I definitely got a solid clog today. I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I mean, I've, like, changed yeah. nozzles before if if there's a clog. Because you can just, like, pop the top off, put it on another can, and keep going. Sure. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yep, yep. So, uh... I don't, I don't trust my zenithals to a spray paint can, though. I can't do it. Oh, it's a risk. I, I mean, yeah. we, we both have airbrushes. We both like our airbrushes. We're both reasonably competent with them. Um... But since we're in a position of talking to newer painters who do not have that luxury, every once mm -hmm. in a while I try to dip my toes back in to, to using a rattle can. And 
I, I swear I get worse with it with you know each <laughs> passing year. Just right. Yeah. I think I think if you're legitimately if you're gonna do a zenithal style <clears throat> highlight on your model to paint it, you're probably better off slap chopping that model rather than than going with the zenithal spray can. I think you're right. Just as like an objective baseline of things to do. Yeah. No, I think you're um, right. I mean, you're still yeah. going to be taking the risk with your, you know, black spray prime, but, but it's less uh, of a risk though, yeah. isn't it? You're yeah. you're reducing the risk by half by not pulling out your white immediately after, and you're not going to get the weird speckling that that can happen. Yeah. yeah. I think that's my biggest issue with that anyway, is is the speckling. Oh. It's no matter what you do, it's going to be there. Like with an airbrush, you can kind of mitigate that with like inks and stuff. Uh, but spray can is a spray can. So. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. All right, Casey. Mm. You have a daughter. Your second child is a daughter. <laughs> what did you name her? Your second child is a daughter. Yeah, I named her Elora. Where'd you get that e name? Well. When I was but a young boy, I watched a movie that influenced my life greatly. Sort of. I actually didn't like it for a long time. But then I, I grew to like it because I became an adult and said, that's objectively a good movie. Um, Willow. Willow. The movie. The the tiny baby of the prophecy. Elora Dannon. Uh, I named my daughter Elora. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Alora Dan and right. the da Daenerys Targaryen of 2022. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of the only bummer with the fact that there is a new TV show coming out. It's like how many how many people are going to legitimately name their kids that now that that's a thing yeah. where I was like, nah, man, like this came out in like 89, like way before you. Don't don't be taking the name. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have not watched the new series yet. I've been saving it because hmm. I know there's like a two episode premiere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a little bit nervous, right? Because clearly like this is a continuation and a whole thing. And not that it technically matters in the long run, but you know, still would hey. if it sucked, I would feel bad. <laughs> hey, knowing what kind of uh, teasing your child is going to endure right useful knowledge yeah well, that's why i didn't include the name dannon in her name that's no. not her middle name mm -hmm. like that's that's a yogurt name um not gonna do that yeah the first two episodes were decently good i thought and the so far you know n n yeah. none of the named characters that you'll recognize are are terrible or obnoxious or anything like that. So it's good news. Fingers crossed on that one. You may have dodged a bullet there, Casey. Yeah, for the next like uh, eight Alora episodes may have, or whatever. Yeah, dodged a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but that would also that would also assume that the show like somehow hits like really hard culturally and and stays long enough for kids born in the same time to be like oh that show that came out when we were born sucked ass <laughs> like nice. that's, that's probably not realistically gonna happen <laughs> so like it's probably fine <laughs> hey we'll she got find another out four or five years yeah we'll find out maybe yeah maybe the best thing that could happen is it gets canceled after one season but who knows you never know who knows i don't know but you say you say it's halfway decent so yeah so far so good and I always like to give at least a brief mention of, you know, fantasy shows on this podcast because they come mm -hmm. with a possibility of new monsters and new minis to paint. That's true. I am not aware of any Willow miniatures, but it could happen. Oh, man. I'm trying to think now. Uh, I have the only two board games in existence that hmm. were based on willow and i do not think they come with minis okay pretty sure they don't they no, they don't they come with little cardboard standees that's that's what they have uh yeah so no minis but that would be cool i wouldn't mind that uh it there is happen. an rpg 
there's like a Willow RPG and extended like lore book hmm. that you can get into. So I mean, technically you could like you know kit bash some some Willow style minis, but yeah, it's not far off from like Lord of the Rings stuff, anyways. I mean, in some ways, it's pretty generic fantasy, but um, yeah. I mean, in the original movie, like some of the armor designs were not yeah. standard. There, there was like a strong. I don't know, like Mongol influence, if I'm remembering correctly, on some that, of the armor feels, designs. That like, feels right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that feels right. Like the whole Mad Mardigan thing seemed yeah. very... Whatever uh, Mad Mardigan was wearing in the third act was mm -hmm. was not just like knight's armor, you know? Right, yeah. Yeah, it definitely had like its own unique look to it, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but in a lot of ways, yeah, it's just regular humans and the, the dogs were a little bit weird, but nothing too crazy. Yeah. Basically like Rottweilers with bigger teeth, but. No, they were all, they that. were all like furry. The, the furry well, dogs. Yeah, they had some fur. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Shaggy. There, shaggy there was the, the, the like three headed Hydra thing. That was pretty cool. There you go. So I have a feeling like I, I guess that they could be running into you know crazy monsters from time to time sure you know similar to the hydra of just like oh mm -hmm. there's a big old monster and those could be minis at some point and mm -hmm. look there's already tons of minis in the world but we just you got to keep an eye out for for new possibilities I mean, if there was a legitimate like three-headed Hydra from Willow Mini, I would I would paint that up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it, it looks cool. Yeah. Like it's not normal. So. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. The uh, what else? The trolls. Those are pretty unique. And they seem to be like prevalent in that world. Like the fact that like this main character dude willow is like i hate trolls you know assuming that he's met them many times enough to hate them mm. it's like, i don't like them don't like them trolls are terrible it's like okay i guess you've run into lots of trolls you just you just don't care for them. uh you know he ends up like meeting them later on so yeah those look pretty cool uh they're basically like big gorillas yeah hey we shall see yeah you never know yeah all right, so we have a little bit of a main topic today. A little bit, yeah. And I want to dig into it here. So as we're recording, it's uh, early December, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think I think we both celebrate Christmas in our in our own way. Um, sure. You know, my family does a Christmas tree. Your family puts a chicken in a bucket. And, but it, but it's a very similar kind of tradition, I think. <laughs> I, you know, I, I thought we were going to talk about that. I, I did not think it would be exactly like that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what happens. Yep. <laughs> so here is a question that we've received. How do you pass off minis as gifts mm -hmm. But here's the catch to somebody who doesn't really care about minis or they're not a painter, perhaps not a certainly not a war gamer. Right. So are there opportunities to use your your love and knowledge of minis to do your Christmas shopping or other gift giving? There, there are other <laughs> opportunities in life to give gifts, not just at Christmas time or not. Uh, Right. Like, yeah, we're not you... excluding any, any faiths or traditions here. Like, when do you give minis as a gift? Yeah, or or how can you force minis into <laughs> in, into a, a gift-giving right. situation? <laughs> how to force minis into a gift-giving situation. Um, I mean, okay, I, I do think there are a couple ways to go about this, right? Uh, the easiest one. Right. The, the the straightforward, easiest thing to do is you bought a mini that you like that, I don't know, maybe uh, you think somebody else is going to like, you know, or maybe they commented on something at some point or whatever the case is like, uh, my dad likes Willow. So I find a three headed Hydra. I paint it up and I give it to him as a gift. Well, he doesn't necessarily give a crap about minis, but like the three headed Hydra, I painted it. Right. Mm hmm. And we used to watch that movie together. That means something. 
So I can force that model upon him and he will have to display that somehow. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way to do it is like I painted this thing and I'm giving it to you. I spent time and effort right. on this for right. you. Right. That's that's the straightforward I think answer. Like most of the options that I have thought up, uh, mm-hmm. that that is probably a necessary component to sure. to really sell it and uh <laughs> yeah. yeah to sell it to them it's like well i spent time yeah, on to convince so, them uh, that you're you not know. just re-gifting something that you bought <laughs> for yourself uh, at kind of a last minute sort of thing right because yeah. at the end of the day like you 100 percent bought it for yourself to paint and are now re-gifting that to someone else as like a gift and maybe you did think of them at first but you still got enjoyment out of painting it right right now i think yeah, I, I think if you painted it, uh, you know, you put time in, that is an element of a gift right there for sure. And then I think you need just one more ingredient of somehow the model speaks to a common experience or something that you know that they right. like. You know, the the Hydra might be a little bit hard. Like, you, you remember when we watched this movie uh, back in 97 together and we <laughs> both kind of liked it? Like, this was the monster. Do you remember the monster? Right, yeah. Do you remember the monster in that movie? This... <laughs> maybe. 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 Yeah. Well, in my personal case, yeah. um, I can safely say that I've watched the movie Willow with my father mm-hmm. at least twice a year since it came out. Oh, okay. So in in my personal case, okay, there's there a good connection there, there. Then, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, which which is also it plays into the fact that I literally named my daughter Elora from that movie. So there, there's a yeah, there's there's yeah. more of a backstory than I think most people might have in that in that particular case, but yeah, I do know what you mean. Yes, yeah, any any sort of a, a popular culture namesake mini i think i think is acceptable for sure for mm-hmm. sure um yeah yeah any of those cultural touchstones where you actually do have something in common movies video games a lot of video game characters you can find as minis mm-hmm. especially if you have access to a 3d printer for sure for sure oh yeah definitely yeah 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 um i mean there's there's the possibility that you know you're your gifty is not a war gamer, but they play some sort of tabletop games. So if they play D and D, I mean that's an easy one. Yeah, just sure get their character or an NPC they like and and paint that up. Mm-hmm. But r- realistically, uh, <laughs> most people fall outside of that car- category. But if if they do play D and D or Gloomhaven or something like that, yeah okay mm-hmm. that's easy that that's no brainer um but there's i mean there's still the possibility you got some normies out there i mean if you want to paint up a full chess set uh, that is that's a lot of work Ooh, but yeah. that is a possibility right like enough models to enter into the like normie space of like but yeah, i'll that's... play chess look yeah according to my calculations and limited understanding that's 32 miniatures but do do look you slap chop that do a zenithal I mean, yeah. even, even a monochrome yeah. slap chop you got yeah although it's black and white is normal whatever it'll be it would already be halfway there i mean you, they'd you know, both be black like and white that's the problem thing. yeah oh that's fair <laughs> so you do one in the other right you do a white to black and a black to white is that does that even work can you even do that you, you would probably do the slap chop and do a wash and you get you know yeah. red versus blue i mean yeah and they'll figure it, it out for right. themselves they'll figure out Dry if red goes first or single if blue goes first yeah uh blues closer to white i don't know still still a lot of work <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah. but an option an option definitely yeah. yeah and i'm not entirely joking here monopoly i mean most of them oh, are pretty stupid actually, little things fair. but yeah, yeah you uh swap out a thimble for mm-hmm some sort of i don't know the symbol's terrible you you make a little race car though you can do that yeah you can do that you can do that a little horse a little little top hat Mm -hmm. no monopoly monopoly is awful 
for a game with minis, they those pieces are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, they're pointless. It's partially why they're terrible. They they don't mean anything. Like, yeah. You could literally use anything you want. So I guess in that respect, you could actually do that. You could just recreate the the same things. Now Candyland, no, no nobody who's going to appreciate the effort you put into painting is going to appreciate you painting tiny gingerbread man for yeah. for Candyland. Even my uh, even my six year old is like Candyland. Like no, no. No. no, the game is preset by the time you figure out who's going first and, and shuffle the <laughs> yeah, deck. Pretty much, yeah. like, like I have no say in this. It's it's whatever Not cards all. come up. Zero. Yeah, you could you could oh, play it with your cats, you know. And uh, there are, just, there are a handful of games like that that I I I understand how that they are introductory style games to children, but the fact that there is. 100% random chance at who's going to win like makes them just bad games because I can't pretend to let my child win and sure. be like congratulations I can't control the outcome it's literally random so if we're yeah. playing and I win 10 times in a row and he's like I can hate board games yeah. well it's not my fault it's Candyland's fault. You got you got to throw it, you know. No, I won't buy Madison <laughs> Avenue. Nah, I don't. <laughs> right, that at one least is in not that important. Instance, yeah. Yeah. like now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up for sale. And try a new strategy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 His workarounds in in those cases, He's trying to get people into board games, right? Like, not this Candyland business. Don't paint minis for Candyland, for God's no, sakes. But at don't least do those. That have characters those are little gingerbread men right they're they're all the same they're just different colors yeah but you could swap them out for for better miniatures <gasps> yeah but i think that just might be a waste of time the more i think about axe. it that's a terrible <laughs> idea but there are a terrible idea <laughs> there are some games when you move some sort of a uh, little character around a board mm -hmm. that might be appropriate and um, you listener at home you might know a game or two like that like uh, betrayal. Betrayal is a good one. Yeah, the house on haunted hill or whatever. Okay, that's a good or one. clue. Individual characters. Clue that that Does also. Does clue have work. figurines? Yeah. Okay. Right. No. Do you, no, they don't. It has characters. It'd be cool to it make. It has characters, but then they're just cards in an envelope. You can't put a character in an envelope. That's a good point. I mean, you could. It would. It just. You'd probably. It wouldn't work well. Which one You're was. right. It wouldn't work. You're well. right. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe this, is this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. We're going down a terrible path here. Okay. <laughs> what if they just have more general interest stuff? They sure. like uh, miniature schnauzers, the dog, or yeah, or they yeah, like, yeah. or they like horses, you know. Mm -hmm. Or paint up yourself a rider Rohan and hand it off to him like that's yeah, a horse or, guy. Or right? they're really yeah. into unicorn. I mean, like a lot of people yeah. just like dragons. They're not they're not gamers necessarily. Like a lot of people just kind of like dragons. That you know that's that's always been something. actually a dragon. The more I think about it, you can give a dragon to anyone. Everyone likes dragons. I mean that's kind of true. You like, just you paint a dragon in their weird, favorite like, color tchotchke shops you know what i'm saying there's just dragons everywhere and they're like yeah. oh you got this pewter dragon this is like a snow globe dragon mm -hmm. this dragon's got like a little diamond in it and like they just did dragons everywhere and like people totally buy that stuff and i've always wondered why because everybody like likes this, dragons i mean i guess so but it's like a weird it's like a, a mall ninja stuff right it is like that's exactly what that is. Everybody like, oh, likes I, mall I ninja my, stuff. <laughs> I bought my katana at the mall, and I bought this pewter dragon. <laughs> All the people like, I know I, like I mall ninja stuff. All that. my friends and family, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your mom got got that katana for Christmas. Yeah, last you put year. that under the chicken bucket at Christmas time, and you yeah. have some some happy family. I tell you that the chicken bucket giveth that year. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think i think anything where you have some sort of an inside joke with a person 
you, you can you can do that. You know, paint up a little Jar Jar Binks or something. I think, I think you can, you know, you know did yeah. make something work there. Is um, that an inside joke? Like, you just gave that to George Lucas for one Christmas? You're like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, I had this thought. What if you get your wife for Christmas an actual riding lawnmower? But under the chicken bucket, you wrap up a model riding lawnmower, you know? And it's like, hey, check check the garage, you know? This is a lot of work to buy yourself uh-huh. a riding lawnmower. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I won't be using. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life piece. I forgot it's just all dirt behind your houses out there, but... Uh, if you had a lawn, I okay. This is not all specifically advice for Casey for people <laughs> yeah, that I do don't. have lawns I and riding lawnmowers. I'm like, or, I I don't. I have uh, what, what zero, I'm trying to do is like zero like, like a representation of an yeah, actual yeah. gift. The way you get a a, a gift certificate, a, a represented a representation of something else, like. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yes. Like you yeah. get the mini of themselves riding a yeah. riding mower and in the garage there is a riding mower. Yeah. Here here is a miniature of, of Mickey Mouse and Goofy Dog because uh, next year we're going I to see, Disney I World see. but yeah, yeah. I needed to put something under the tree, little Jimmy, right. because, yeah. I didn't want to print out the piece of paper that says congratulations, here's how much money you spent on your Disney trip. Not again. Yeah. Right. It didn't figure, go over well last year, so I got to put sense. some sort of object <laughs> under there to uh, An keep object, you busy. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if anything, to throw you off, right? Like, yeah, it's a little box with a thing inside. It's not just a piece of paper. Yeah. So, actually, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Oh. It's an unconventional way to, like, give a gift without notifying the person, you know, that it's, it's a gift card or a trip or whatever the case mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. And you spend some time on it, so they'll probably keep it. Um, I mean, around Christmas time, I think ornaments are definitely a thing that people are getting into. Um, That's a good idea. A yeah, dragon would be an, an incredible ornament. Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> like Just in, take a in flight, and you post. know? Yeah, yeah. Like you, like yeah. you can get any dragon pose you want if it's not an ornament, because you just hang it from the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Or give like a, a Marathi ornament. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Giant, giant Medusa ornament. Yeah. I like that. Of course, not now, all I... of our listeners are, are listening at Christmas time nor celebrate, but... Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. If, give, if you've got people general, who care about right? ornaments, you do that. Or, you, yeah. know, you know, something something to hang, to, to dangle from your rear view mirror in your car. Right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. I wonder if that would get sun damaged. Yeah, almost Probably. certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe don't do that. <laughs> don't use a lot of reds or anything, because those are gonna. Uh, those oh yeah, will yeah, fade. those will go yeah. quick. Yeah, <laughs> they turn pink real fast. Real fast. Real fast. <laughs> Man, it, it's so funny. Like. uh so I went to school for like graphic communications, graphic design and that kind of thing. Um, and that was one of the things that they, they did tell us. It's like, look, if you're ever going to make an outdoor sign, avoid these colors. Because like it, they still just haven't figured out how to like let certain colors, you know, fade naturally in the sun. It's if you have red, well, in six months, that's going to be a pink logo. Do you remember? It just is. Do you remember if there were colors other than red that they recommended? I think I think it was mostly red is okay. what they were talking about. Yep. Yeah, um, I know there are other colors. I don't remember. I mean, jeez, hmm. that was two thousand six. Uh, <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a minute. Um, I've, I asked my wife, like she still does all that stuff. I just like didn't do it. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. But I know red for sure. Like, we'll fade quick. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe this is a bad idea. This is a really bad yeah, idea. Okay, okay. so, so do maybe not. Maybe not that. I mean, either way, like, giving somebody a mini in general 
that you painted and you spent time on and you, and you thought hey you know this this seems like something you'd like like that's gonna do something for somebody like they're gonna appreciate the fact that you tried and that you gave them something that you worked on because i mean even if you spent a few hours on it right like you still had to go through and paint it and people yeah. that don't paint models like they don't know what the top tier painting level is they don't understand what that is no. so they see something you painted and they're just like you painted this oh it's so small you put a paintbrush look on how yeah, tiny it's it tiny. is where you, you have to tiny use glasses. a magnifying glass <laughs> exactly yeah it's how always small like is that brush? Question, right yeah yeah <laughs> Like those are the the big questions. Were you wearing where you know the, the magnifying glasses and how small was your paintbrush? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like they they're gonna be happy. They're gonna be impressed, and it's it's definitely a good gift. Uh, I think the more personal you can make it, the better. Obviously, sure. Yeah, well, it's good. It's a good gift, regardless of the season. Yeah, hundred percent. I you know I was thinking. For for the purpose of like displaying it on your desk or something like that, I think twenty eight millimeters is actually a little bit too small for the sort of like display figurines people normally like. Yeah, you know, if we're thinking, uh, if we're thinking Hummels or we're thinking action figures or I mean even Funko Pops, like they're normally a bit larger scale. I mean, it's part of the reason we like them is is cool how tiny they are. That's yeah, it's cool. As part of what we like, how tiny but... I can paint with my tiny brush. Yeah, but just yeah. as like a a standalone knickknack on on your desk or something, I almost think eh, seventy five millimeter might be better. But nothing nothing wrong with a standard twenty eight millimeter. But for 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 a normie who just wants a a little bit of a paperweight for you know hanging <laughs> around the house, eh, I don't know. Might, I mean, might need a little bit a bigger. Paperweight. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. you might need to give it to them in like a little glass cube case, one of those things, or like a Chessex box or Actually, yeah, I was I was yeah. just about to say that. Chessex box. Mm -hmm. Um I've been seeing that floating around the internet lately, like people like discovering the Chessex box. Yeah. Take the dice out, turn it upside down. It's a display case for a twenty. This is a clear model. plastic box that the company Chessex mm -hmm. sells dice in. And yeah, and you don't need it you know, for anything. It, it it fits a miniature quite nicely, and it's just a little clear plastic sort of display box. Yes. And then plus you got a bunch of dice hanging around. Your your dice go in the giant crown royal bag anyway, so hmm. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And um so so here's one more thing. And this mm -hmm. one, this one may be a touchy subject, and and I I think it's tricky to pull off well, but nativity scenes. Okay, okay, okay. I can see that. Okay, I mean, because you can buy them, not painted. Oh, I actually didn't know that. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, like you can buy them in like wood, like carved wood. Okay. You can buy them in like little like ivory looking statues. Obviously, they come mm. fully painted, but that's a thing. You could paint that up and give it to somebody. Probably appreciate. It. Yeah. I, I mean, the a person who actually cares about nativity scenes, you get them, you get them some really good elements for that. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they might really appreciate that. I could see that. I didn't even think about that. So usually pretty tiny. Unless you buy one it's, from Costco, it's, then they're like... It's a fascinating intersect that I really haven't seen. So, sure. I mean, I, I know there are a few, like, hobby YouTubers who, who are practicing religious people, and I think that it would be very appropriate if they wanted some year to, you know, do a hobby video of I made a nativity scene for, for my house or, or whatever. And right. of, like the, the idea of, of someone with serious hobby skills going all out on a nativity scene, I think is a, <laughs> I think it's an interesting idea. That is an interesting idea. I mean, I think I think a lot of us are maybe not appropriate <laughs> to do that. Like I, man, I was thinking about this earlier. <laughs> and if I was in charge of painting up, you know, three wise men, I would just find the stupidest mages I could. And right. I'd be like, oh, this one's awesome. And That's kind of what I'm thinking, though. 
Like I'd, like, I'd it, accidentally like if I make it blasphemous. That. I know that, but <laughs> yeah. But but if you did it in a caring way, yeah. Like mom, I know that that wise man has changed. Should not be casting a fireball, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But it just looks so good mm-hmm. that I felt like that made sense. Honestly, if I did that, if I like legitimately took like, you know, frost grave mages and, and did up three wise men and something like yeah. my mom would appreciate the hell out of that. <laughs> did, did you use Bilbo as the baby Jesus? Like, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> That's I, I, I did. I did. Up like, the look, all like, of the all sense, the models right? I found of babies were not very good. So y- yes, <laughs> right. but like, yeah, or yeah. like you know, those little uh, Warhammer cherubs with the the face. Right. Like that's oh, not the baby. Oh no! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's so much more blasphemous than Bilbo. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It's fair. But it's it's a baby. I could kit bash that. I'll take a Bilbo head. Right. Put it on the cherubs body. Right. Right. That makes sense. This I is, like that. This is why we should not be making nativity scenes like ourselves. Yeah. But but people with That's our fair. skill sets who sure, treat sure, sure. this oh, just with a Seriously. little bit of uh, respect, respect should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's fair. That's perfectly fair. Because you know, uh, I've, I've seen a bunch of these it, that are, you know... Uh, your standard factory paint job on on, on all the, the the figures, the characters, and yeah, like okay, it just doesn't stand out. Like yeah, I see. Okay, I see yeah. what it's representing, but there's no there's no craftsmanship like to an in end, most right? of these. Yeah, 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 exactly. I I do think that's why people probably I don't know if they prefer, but I mean that's why they make like just purely wooden sculpted or purely like little ivory statue looking ones since they're like well we don't really want to try and dot those eyes perfectly you know the three wise men looking off to you know each side so (laughs) (laughs) yeah i can see that it's like a good reason not to do that Oh, that's just a different way it could be accidentally blasphemous. Is like you, <laughs> just is, like it's is if you try <laughs> you try to paint a nativity scene with perfect seriousness and and dignity and all that, but you mess it up. So like you just like just bad painting. You like mess up the <laughs> eyes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the baby Jesus is looking off to the left <laughs> and to the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see how that might be bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, the baby mm. Jesus needs to go to a pediatrician specialist to, yeah. <laughs> needs, needs to wear a, an eye patch on one eye for a while. All right, to, to yeah. correct that. Little, yeah, correct little that. Little that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think some people, for some gift givers and some gifties, a nativity scene would be an interesting idea that actually that actually could be pretty cool. But I think you, you really mm-hmm. have to thread that needle there of uh, getting the right, the right, right combo of gifty and gift giver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if I were giving that to my mom, she'd probably forgive me for the eyes. She'd probably so, forgive you. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, she'll forgive me. That's the. Uh christianly thing to do after all Mm -hmm. forgiveness Mm -hmm. (laughs) seems fine (laughs) otherwise though like yeah okay (laughs) yeah trying to think (sighs) what else i normally just uh i I definitely have passed off 3d printed figurines of my face on a fantasy character before as as gifts to my family but that's not an option for most people so i'm not including that in the main list here true true not an option for most people yeah unless you take a look at today's sponsor the 3d scanner no i'm not totally joking we don't we don't we're not gonna do that no. we're not gonna do that but there are scanners that like do pretty okay. I mean, that's, that's some little uh, like software kung fu for you mm-hmm. to to do that. But I mean, the fact that you personally have like your face sculpted up 
on a model. Like, yeah, that's a pretty easy gift. Like, look, mom, it's me in a canoe. It's with my cats. It is definitely <laughs> within the realm of possibility for some of our listeners to either use their phone or an actual 3D scanner to get their face yeah. and to just a little bit of Blender, throw it on a pre-existing STL and print that out. Exactly. That is that is a possibility or i mean even better if you can scan your family members faces while they sleep it'll be a total <laughs> surprise when they get that on a miniature hmm. and when they're sleeping while I mean, they that's, sleep. they're, they're nice and still so that you can really get a good scan like of them 3d scan but if they mouth. wake up part way through you're you're mm. busted and they're gonna yeah. know what you're up to they're gonna know Redo you're working on a christmas gift for them if they they wake up during the scanning <laughs> process so yeah, uh, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you certainly yeah. want to, wouldn't want them to wake up. So you know, maybe we've, use some chloroform really, uh, beforehand, prop their head up, get the proper lighting, and then do the three D scan around them. I mean, if you're really gonna commit, you know, mm -hmm. just say. Like, yeah, we've really thought this one chance. through. I think we've got some yeah. some good answers here for our listeners. Three <laughs> D scanning done right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and finally. You can try to pass off a learn to paint kit as a gift. Uh, good luck. I'm thinking about it though. It's got the highest uh, reward output if it if it turns out and they actually gave it a shot. You know. I mean that's that's the thing, right? It's like it's so hard giving like painting as a gift in general. Yeah. Because it's like look like if your brush out of the box just sucks, like if it just splays everywhere, like you're not gonna have fun. If your paint is chalky and clumpy, like all of those kits are, you're not going to have fun. So, I don't know, it's super hit and miss. Like, okay, my sister uh, just recently got married, went to a wedding, good wedding, all the stuff. Cool. Uh, her now husband is in dental school. He's almost done. And he's like pretty interested in painting minis. Like, I showed him all the stuff he's kind of been interested in for a while. And he's like, oh, I just don't know where to start. And I'm like, well, Christmas is coming. So I'm like, now I'm kind of thinking along this, those lines. Right? It's like, do I give him like a kit? Do I put together a kit? I don't know. I mean, I mean, in I don't, your situation, I don't wanna... you could put yeah. together a kit. Yeah. I mean, certainly, yes. So like I have stuff I can put together. Um, but it's like, I don't want him to have a bad time. Right. I'm also afraid of like overdoing it where I'm like, here's a yeah. Windsor and Newton series seven. Why don't you try this? Like that's a, that's not a good idea either. Cause he's not going to know what the hell that is. And it's going to ruin a, you know, $17 brush or whatever, <laughs> like day one. So I, yeah, no, there's like a limit there, but, but giving it as a gift is definitely uh, a thing. I want to, I want to go down that road. I want somebody I can call and be like, dude, what are you painting? You know, like a family member, like a Thanksgiving rolls around. It's like, I painted 20 kobolds this year, and I feel pretty good about that. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, you see your brother-in-law a couple of times a year. You got something to talk about. Exactly. Otherwise, Set that up, up now. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Is that at the start of the relationship, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Because that's what it is. Like, sure, he married my sister. I still got to deal with him. So we get this mini thing established the proper way. All the Thanksgivings and Christmases and such. We got something to talk about. <laughs> now, the other side of this relationship <laughs> is this guy's like, oh, my God, this, uh, my new brother-in-law. Like, I got to distinct I gotta paint these little things. <laughs> this freaking weirdo doesn't talk about anything else. Like, <laughs> It's the only way to, he doesn't even leave the house except to yeah. fill up his big gulp every once in a while. And then <laughs> it's just... literally the truth, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to talk to this guy about, but mm -hmm. I got the dexterity to paint up a couple of kobolds right before I head off to Thanksgiving dinner. And... I mean, theoretically, if you're a dentist, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I went to the dentist this week, actually, and I, and I finally oh. asked, like, a question I've been meaning to ask. And, like, while they were in my mouth, I was like, how many, uh -huh. do, how many scrapers do you have? 
<laughs> and they're like, oh, you know, we got we have about six of them, but there's really only four that we really use a lot. Four yeah. are, are different size or shape. <laughs> they're like, oh, it's a different angle for, you know, if you're taking, yeah. you know, plaque off the, the teeth facing you or away for you. Uh, cool. And I thought that was pretty cool. But for real, uh, a dentist and actually, especially the dental hygienist must have mm. incredible dexterity. And I would think so. To like, not stab the holy shit out of your gums. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, yeah, those things are sharp. Those people would be very good mini painters if that's what they wanted to do in their free time. See, that's what I was thinking, too. And I didn't bring this up. Like, like he he kind of knew that, like, I painted models, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he even sent me, like, a pair of those, the dental fancy pants glasses. Mm-hmm. So, like, I do have a nice set of those, and they are nice. Nice. Yeah. I've used them a couple times. It's weird. It feels weird. It's like an out-of-body type of experience. Uh, but, man, like, you can see everything. Like, I can really tell how bad at painting I am when I wear those, so I try Ooh. not to. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Um, but still, like, the amount of dexterity that you build up. And, and when we were talking about it, he's like, well, you know, to maintain that dexterity, right? Like, in the off time, I could do this. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that that's actually pretty valid. Sure. Like, in order to get in to do those things and to have that, like, little micro muscle movements and stuff, like, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Oh, for sure. Like, it should translate, and you should be able to keep that up. So, like, that's why he's interested. And uh, so I, I'm going to, like, put something together for Christmas, probably. That sounds great. Hopefully he doesn't what, listen to uh, this podcast. I, I am curious then, what minis you, you're going to try. Man, I don't know. That's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't really know right now. Like, I'm. That's what I was thinking. Maybe getting a kit, but then kind of hit, hit, miss, and I don't know. Like, I don't want to overdo it too. Like, here's like you know, all this crazy stuff, right? And like a fifty page. Here's a battle force. You're playing at Right, yeah. Yeah. I I mean, look, if we're gonna do it, like, uh, let's go all in and be like, no, 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 we're gonna play a game. So you need to paint this before you uh, come back. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they live. This, they live this like, gift uh, says it's for the Omnissiah. Is this, who, is this yeah. for me? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't want to overwhelm him, right? Yeah, that's that's always the thing too. It's like if you're giving a gift to a non war game player like you do need to like temper yourself a little. Like we were talking earlier, like dragons. People like dragons. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. get it. All right, like you could probably yes. gift a dragon. Yes, a dragon yeah. would be a great option. Right, like everybody's like, oh, a dragon. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Dragon, yeah. a couple of rat men, a couple of rat men from the future. Yes. Um, kobolds are pretty small, to be fair. Yeah. They're small. They're pretty small. They're small. Crafty, yeah. Throw a couple in. You got any yeah. trolls or something? You get some trolls in there? I, I do actually. I have a, a Frostgrave troll that I haven't opened. Okay. I've had for a good 10 years, yeah. Uh, oh, That'd be a good okay. One. Okay. Yeah. It's a nice model, too. Well, there I'm you go. You're paint. sorted. <sighs> yeah. Sorted. Sorted. All done good. and done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah, you just you just label that, that uh, gift as to your... Your brother-in-law and your sister, and call it a day. <laughs> to my sister, may you somehow, if he gets involved, have money for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. The dental money will now be going to war gaming. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So you finally finished your lizard army. I did. I did. I played that game. More importantly, I finally finished a video and, <laughs> and got that posted. So how many how many days between videos? What's the record? The record is sixty nine days between videos, and this is mm. the second time I have 
done 69 days <laughs> 69 between videos. 69 exact days. All right. And man, That's I too good not to spent mention. a month painting lizards, went and recorded it, came back, got a cold for a couple of weeks, apparently. Right, re-recorded yeah. the voiceover like three times because my <laughs> voice kept changing oh, uh, man. and uh finally finally got that video out the door but now that's that's good to have that out and a lot of that off of my hard drive now i'm i'm quite happy about that so <laughs> that, that, that's good yeah 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 that video was a whole like month-long painting journey plus behind the scenes at the the film studio and everything so glad to get that video out the door and uh yeah people are like oh i thought you died like no ah, just just <laughs> busy painting lizards it, no, just, it you know took me way longer than i thought it would and that's a topic right. that's a topic we've been recommended actually for a future episode of how do you estimate how sure, long sure. projects will take oh i like that and how i am a terrible person estimate? to estimate how long projects will take but I think I'm better at it than probably. you are. Probably. <laughs> Almost sure. certainly. Like by <laughs> definition. Yeah. 69 days, you monster. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. I'm pretty sure I put together a couple of conquest armies in that time that I haven't mentioned until now. Like, I, I do stuff. Right. I stay busy. Oh, yeah. I stay oh, yeah. busy. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly. I see it. Mostly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, like, the uh the beard growth alone in that video it's worth the video <laughs> <laughs> just that alone like if you could just do that every time from now on <laughs> like that way we know where you're at and how long it legitimately took you to make this it's not like you just withheld it you right. can see the time right. like around day 11 i was like oh man he's really feeling this <laughs> yeah. like, uh, that, tell, that was I a fun little it. joke in the video is i did like a a really quick check-in of of each of the day like day one assembling lizards day five painting lizards yeah and, and the joke was that i just didn't shave during that time and so i looked like filthier and more disgruntled <laughs> every passing day of painting <laughs> lizards and that yeah. was a that was a fun little joke to put in there that was and good. yeah i actually i in the video, I make no mention of that at all. Although right. I I had a clip that I decided not to include, oh, but no. I but I had a clip on the final day, which was day twenty three, of mm. like, okay, this is where the army's at. It's time to pack it up, go to the film studio, and play a game. And I had a clip where I said, "Time to get my game face on," and then I did my little uh, snapping fingers yeah. thing again. And yeah, the game uh, face was a yeah. mustache. It was it was the joke. And, and, and that, <laughs> you didn't include that. And I decided not to include that. I'm you, like, no, it's it's oh, funnier if I just make on. no mention to facial hair no, whatsoever. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's it's funnier to put an exclamation point on the fact that you didn't mention it. It's to go, yeah, I didn't mention it, but boom, mustache. Still not talking about it. Moving on. That would have been gold. I thought, I, mean, of, I thought really about good. it, and I just didn't make the final cut. But uh, oh, it's such a bummer. Oh well. Do you still have that footage? Of course. No, no. I when I say take it off my hard drive, I mean put it into a deep storage hard drive. I, take okay. it off my SSD. Yeah. Do you do you really keep everything? I do. I do. Dude. Yeah. Um, no. And I've got a, no. a couple of eight terabyte hard drives that I just throw everything on to and yeah i mean every once in a while every once in a while i'm like man i wish <laughs> i had this shot and then i have it <laughs> i mean that's fair yeah. i've done that many times and what i resort to is downloading the file from youtube if i don't have the footage because right. i usually give right. it a month or so before i start to delete the backlog um, but if i if i don't i download the youtube video and then it's like eh, it's kind of not great quality exactly yeah, that's about it. oh that would that's hurt me it. sure mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not 4k oh <laughs> stuff like that man it bugs yeah. me it gets to me <laughs> i mean it is what it is i guess i don't know yeah but anyway <gasps> the the lizard videos have started to come out, and the professional filmmakers, as of this recording, are still editing up the actual battle report there. And that'll eventually get posted on Goobertown Hobbies, and we'll we'll see how that goes. But 
my little behind the scenes video shot on my, you know, five hundred dollar camera. That one's out now. <laughs> right. The, the the real video shot on a fifty thousand dollar camera. That that's coming. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that should be good though. I mean, honestly, like the even the stuff that you showed, like the the behind the scenes stuff where it's like looking at the monitor for what was going on, like yeah man that that arm the camera arm is smooth yeah the 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 robotic camera arm that was moving this camera around the game board is i think it's like a three hundred thousand dollar robot arm i would think so yeah yeah the the operator uh you know kind of programs where the camera goes and how fast Mm -hmm. it goes between places and that thing has like a zillion different like servo motors in there and it yeah, is imagine, it is yeah. s- smooth and precise and i think we only crushed one piece of terrain and it wasn't destroyed or anything <laughs> but there definitely was a point oh. when we were trying to set mm-hmm. up a shot where the camera just or just i don't, I don't even think we pressed anything it just went <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna ask that at some point like when we got really into that it's like how many models did this thing just like flat up nothing Smack over <laughs> nothing but there were there were points when i mean they, they, these guys programmed in so many moves and there was one mm-hmm. like a massive shot of all the minis on the table and the camera just goes and looks at each unit in turn and like rotates and goes up and down and it's doing a lot of really complex moves very mm-hmm. close to all of these minis and all this terrain and yeah. just all programmed in and thankfully, no one bumped the table during the programming process. Right. Which yeah, would have so entirely <laughs> ruined the, the, everything. Holy crap. Yeah. That's but intense. That'll, that'll be coming out one of these days. One of these days. Dude, I'm, I'm yeah. super looking forward to it. I think that video is going to kill. And I think, uh, I think it's going to change the way that we probably look at the way this is filmed. Uh, I mean, realistically. It's. I can tell you that it takes a lot of effort to make oh, whatever sure. this video is going mm-hmm. to be. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think we're in danger of there being a silly arms race to get robot camera operators. Not, not, not yeah. robot cameras, but I, I do feel like the probe lens wars might be upon us. Uh-oh. Yeah, um, they, maybe. I think a little bit of that is is going to happen i think um trying to create more cinematic wargaming experiences for video i think that is upon us um like we're seeing that with some channels that are coming out anyways right. like just being cinematic as possible and like i love it i'm here for it yeah like i want more of that so i i do think that some of that type of stuff is coming out you know, like, I think there's a lot of us that rely on, like, I'm not to downplay, but, like, cheap tricks and uh, and comedy to, like, push. And that's fine. It's all what it is. Um, but being more professional about it, I think, is the next way forward, I guess. Well, I mean, I think all of those lanes are available, you know, from the oh, very, yeah, yeah. you know, personality and character-driven stuff to the very crunchy game stuff to the you know, i assume i assume the edit of this will come out kind of fluffy in terms of you know there's so much camera movement that who even knows what's going on with the game except for sure sure i guess this model seems to be next to this model and i guess they're fighting <laughs> i don't know i have no idea what it'll end up uh, uh, editing fair, down yeah. to but yeah that's interesting yeah like how much movement is too much movement can you keep track of it that's oh man I don't know. There's just so many things with this whole yeah. thing. That I'm, I'm excited to see. It, what it'll happens. raise some some interesting points and questions that it'll give folks something to think about and and possibly yeah. open up some some new ideas for for future content. But yeah, uh, and I, I do see all of this like thinking that there literally is a lane for everybody, and it it's not like going to downplay or take away from anything anybody else is doing. Right. Just throwing that out there. I, I got one comment today just, you know, pondering the possibility of, like, is this going to, you know, make other channels look cheap or something like that? And no, no, I don't no. think so at all. No. Um, 
for for one thing, after you're done watching this one 20 minute video, you're, you're going to want to watch other games. And yeah, there's, and they're there's just only gonna, one game gonna shot with a robot <laughs> arm. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you might come back to the robot arm, but, you know, it's other things, people making good yeah. battle reports and all the, the like. So, yeah, I'm not I don't think I'd be worried about it, like hurting anyone. Yeah, for sure. It's just something else cool to throw on top of the pile. Yeah. Look, yeah. Mr. Bean is the best TV show that's ever been invented, but there's Probably only true. 15 episodes of it. So after you're done with Mr. Bean, you watch Keeping Up Appearances. You, mm. you watch, I don't know what's after Black Keeping Adder. Up Appearances, but the, you, you, yeah, you, you watch other TV. There's Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you see that? See the one he did? The, oh man, I can't remember what it's called. That something B. Like he fights a bee in a house. Mr. Bean? Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's not technically isn't it just Mr. called Bean. like the bee or something? I think it is the bee. Yeah, it's on Netflix or something. Hmm. It's great. It's fantastic. Mr. Bean fighting an imaginary CG bee for like eight episodes. It's wonderful. I thought it was a movie. Still a genius. Okay. Is it a movie? I don't know. So, no, no. It's just like eight episodes long. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it, technically, it's like a movie length. I think they just cut it up. Which is stupid, but you know, what are you gonna do? It's like episodic B fighting. Okay. Yeah. It's very good though. Very good. Yeah. I mean you can only watch the original Mr. Bean so many times before you start going for okay, what else is out here? You know? Right, right. W- Mr. What, what Bean else do we get? Goes on holiday. Mr. Bean in America. Animated Mr. Bean. Mm-hmm. Then Rowan Atkinson and pretty much everything. Uh yeah, you, you got your Black Adder series. I never yeah. watched the uh, the police one. I didn't, I didn't. No, I didn't either. Yeah. Well, on uh, that note. Yeah, thank you again for joining us on another episode of Paint Bravely. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and sharing this message with your hobby friends. And as always, we appreciate each and every one of you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Talk to you next time.